Hi everyone, today we're talking about making closing entries and I'm your instructor Brandy. The accounts that we close in accounting are called temporary accounts. We close revenue accounts, expense accounts, and withdrawals. Let's take a look at our statement of owner's equity for just a moment. It starts out with our capital account, we add in investments, we add in net income, or subtract net loss, and we take away our withdrawals for the year. That gives us a closing balance at the end of the year. Anything that's part of owner's equity is getting wrapped up into that capital account at the end of the year. So capital is obviously already the capital account, so we don't need to close it. Investments are already part of the capital account. We don't have a separate investment account. So what we're closing are the net income accounts, which are the revenues minus expenses, and we're closing this withdrawals account and those are getting put into the capital account at year end. And the reason that we close the accounts is if you think about the income statement, we're trying to tell our investors, our owners, our managers, our net income for a period of time, for either a month, a quarter, or for a year. And so every single year we have to start at zero or else our revenues and expense accounts will keep growing and growing and growing forever. Every year we want to start at zero so we can know how much revenue we have in one year and how much expenses we have in one year. So I'm just going to bring up an example here that we were looking at in a previous example for Jacob's Trekking Company and we're going to concentrate on the adjusted trial balance. We said we need to close revenues, expenses, and withdrawal accounts. So the accounts that we're going to close, withdrawals, service revenue, rent expense, salary expense, and amortization expense. And I'm going to put these all into T accounts showing their balances and you might want to do the same on a piece of paper. So as you can see, I've drawn my T accounts for the service revenue account, the rent expense, salary expense, amortization expense, and withdrawals account. I've also added in a T account for the capital account because that's where we know that our balances are going to end up once we close the balances of the revenues, expenses, and withdrawals. So let's deal with revenues and expenses first. Revenue and expense accounts take a pit stop at an account called the income summary. And the income summary account is exactly what it sounds like. It's summarizing income statement. So let's deal with our service revenue first. How we close an account is we bring its balance to zero. So if we take a look at our service revenue account for a moment, we see that service revenue has a credit balance of $84,500. So in order to bring that account balance to zero, what do we need to do to it? We need to debit the service revenue account by the same amount that is credited currently. So we need to debit the service revenue account by $84,500. And where the credit goes for this journal entry is to the income summary account, that the account balance in service revenue is now zero. If we were to look at how this would look in a journal entry form, what it would look like is this. You would have your date, usually December 31st, your debit would be the revenue account, and your credit would be the income summary account. Now let's do the same thing for expenses. For our rent expense, we have a debit balance of $12,000. We want to bring the balance of rent expense down to zero, and in order to do that, we need to credit it by $12,000. I wrote CLO beside the balance and that just stands for closing entry. We're crediting rent expense and the debit goes to the income summary account. And if we were to do this in journal entry form, it would look like this. Debit to income summary for $12,000 and credit to rent expense for $12,000. We're going to do the same thing with salary expense. It has a debit balance of $7,900, so in order to bring that account down to zero, we're going to need to credit it for $7,900. And the debit, again, goes to the income summary account. We have a debit of $7,900 and a credit of $7,900. Those do subtract to make a balance of zero. And if we were going to look at this in a journal entry format, we have debit income summary, credit salary expense for $7,900. We're going to do the same thing for amortization expense. We need to credit amortization expense for $6,000 and the debit is to the income summary account for $6,000. And my very astute students will notice that you could have done this in one journal entry instead of three for the expense accounts. So this journal entry would have got you to the exact same place. Debit income summary and I'm just leaving a blank spot here for the number for now. I'm going to write in the credits. 
credit rent expense, credit salary expense, and credit amortization expense, 12000 7900 and 6000 respectively. Now I'm going to add up all my credits and put the debit income summary for the total of all the credits. Remember, I'm making sure that my debits equal my credits in every journal entry, and my description would be to close expense accounts. Now let's go back to our T accounts. So now what we want to do is figure out the total balance in our income summary account. So I'm going to draw a line at the bottom of my T and get out my calculator and calculate 84,500 minus 12,000 minus 7,900 minus 6,000. And I get a balance of 58,000 600 credit and you want to stop here because if you have an income statement for this company you can check does the net income of the company equal 58,600 if it's a credit balance that means you have net income if it's a debit balance that means you're in a net loss position well now we can finally close this into our capital account so we're going to do the same process we were doing for the revenue and expense accounts we ask ourselves, what's the balance in income summary? It's 58,600 credit balance. So what we want to do is we want to debit the income summary account for the exact same amount. We want 58,600 as our closing entry. And remember that our debits and our credits always have to equal. So we're debiting income summary and we are going to credit our capital account and that will close our income summary account. How this would look in the journal entry is as follows. So debit income summary, credit J. Smith Capital for $58,600. Our description, to close income summary account. Okay, so we have one more account to deal with and that is the withdrawals account. We're going to go through the same process except withdrawals is not going to hit our income summary account because withdrawals does not show up on the income statement. Withdrawals is going to go straight to the capital account. So you'll notice that our withdrawals account has a $7,000 debit balance in it. We want to credit it for the exact same amount to bring the account down to zero. Since we're crediting withdrawals, we need a debit somewhere else. We're going to debit our capital account for that same $7,000. And what this would look like in a journal entry format is this. So we would be debiting the capital account for $7,000 and crediting our withdrawals account for $7,000. I'm just adding in the previous balance of our capital account from the trial balance. I didn't put it in there before so we wouldn't get confused what the heck that was. Now we've got 63100 which was the beginning balance in our capital from the trial balance. We have our income summary close to the capital account for $58,600 credit. And we have our withdrawals account closed for $7,000 debit. The new balance in our capital account will be $114,700 credit balance. And if you have a statement of owner's equity for your company, this should be your closing balance in your statement of owner's equity. If it's not, you probably have done something wrong. And that's how you close the temporary accounts. Thanks for watching everyone.